This is a tutorial on how to model a spaceship. No, it isn't. This is a beginner's tutorial on how to model a toaster like this. All right. This is not the easiest model to start with, by the way, but um, it's a it's a very good place to start, I would think. It's not too hard. It's not too easy. It's got a lot of techniques. All right. Here I am in Blender 2.79. This is not the newest 2.8. Um, I do have that and I do mess around with it, but I'm much more comfortable in 2.79 and you can still download 2.79 uh, if you want to use that. My colors and my interface may look a little bit different than yours. You can go up to File, User Preferences, and under uh, Themes, Presets, you can choose the theme that you want. I've got Science Lab on. Okay, That's why it looks like this. This is the default scene, uh, and I'm holding the middle mouse button to move around. Now that's one of the things you have to get used to is moving around in the 3D space. Hold the middle mouse button, you can go like this. Hold the, uh, the um, shift, sorry, the middle mouse button, and you can do that. So if you're zoomed in here and you go, okay, I want to look over at the lamp, just go like this. You can also click on something and press the period key to focus in on that item. Okay, I want to focus on the cube, period key and then the middle mouse button, or the scroll wheel, or whatever you call that thing. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is how to select stuff. I'm going to hit A to deselect that. A selects everything. A deselects everything. Um, I've got the left click to select items. Okay? And you can change that under User Preferences. Uh, I believe it's uh, Input here. Select with left or right. I've, I've got left. All right, it's much more familiar to me. All right, now my screencast keys are on so you can see some of the, 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 the keystrokes that I do. I'm going to come up here under Blender Render and I'm going to switch to Cycles. I just prefer to work in Cycles and if we do Materials, we'll do it that way. And that allows me under the Render tab to switch from CPU to GPU Compute to use some of my processing power of my video card. Uh, whether or not you have a video card that works that way and you can select that uh, uh, something you could look into in the future but it doesn't have to be it doesn't matter all right so uh, we're ready to start modeling so I want to del delete all of this stuff I'm going to start again so A to select everything X and just delete so I've got nothing in my scene and I'm just looking like this now let's go back to the image here's our toaster this is what we want to make now we're ready to go so you look at this thing and you say to yourself, how am I going to model this? What shape am I going to start with? Well, it is somewhat of a cube or a rectangle, but it's rounded and it's hard to get a cube to have a nice, rounded, smooth curve like this. It's possible, but it's difficult. We'd be much better off if we started with a circle. We could get this curve and then we'd have to get all this stuff, but we'll do that. So imagine a circle laid on top of this, maybe part of the circle, and then the rest is straight. So we're going to do that. Let's go back to Blender. And by the way, this is the side, <laughs> and this is the front, and that's the back, and there's the other side, right? So we're going to look from the side view, and we're going to make a circle. So let's go back to Blender here. And the side view. Well, you can come down to view. Let's look from the right side. It really doesn't matter whether you look right or left. And it looks like something out of Star Wars or something. We're in right perspective view. Press 5 on the keypad or the number pad. <clears throat> and you're looking from the side. This is the right side of the toaster. I don't know. I guess suppose it's that side. It doesn't matter whether it's right or left, really. And I'm just moving. I'm holding the shift key and moving like that. I just want, this is the center of my stage here. I am in right orthographic view, not perspective view. Press 3 and make sure you press 5 as well so that you're in right ortho view, straight on. So there's the side. So I'm going to have a curve like this. Front is here or here in the back. Okay, so let's start with a circle. We're in object mode. We don't have any objects yet. We're about to add one. So I am going to go Shift A 
And that's the same thing as coming over to create a create circle. I like to go shift a mesh circle. And that will put down something and we see a little bit of a line here. Let's zoom in. But before I click away or make any manipulations, I'm going to look down to here where it says add circle. I'm going to I'm going to look at some of these parameters. In fact, there's one vertices, the number of dots. It says 32. That's what it starts with. I'm going to click here and I'm going to change this to 24. Now you don't see any change yet and that's because the dots are inside the object. This is in object mode. We're going to see that when we edit this. So let's look from the top down. We can see our circle and go into edit mode. You can do that by going object, edit mode. And now we're sort of like inside the thing. In object mode, it's like we're looking at the skin. In edit mode, we're looking at the bones, okay? Like inside of an animal's body, let's say. And, and we can see all of these dots. Now they're all selected right now. I can hit A to deselect them all or A to reselect. There's 24 of these. That's what we changed over here. How many do you use? Well, you know, you'll get a sense of how many you want to use. Uh, try not to use more than you need. Um, but it doesn't matter. Okay, it's like the bones of the body. We got 24 bones. Let's go back to the side view, three, the right view. And we can see, well, this circle is laying flat here. We don't have this part from the side to make the curve. This part here, okay, it's flat. So we're going to have to rotate this. In order to move this, I better select it first. Okay, if I want to rotate this, I have to actually choose it. So I'm going to hit A and that's going to select everything. You see? I can do it from this view. I want to rotate it around the Y axis. I'm rotate it so it stands up. I'll go back to three. Okay, imagine it rotating around the Y. I hope you can see that. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees to stand up. So I'm going to go R, Y, rotate Y direction 90. Now it's standing up in the Y direction. If I go back to object mode, and by the way, I'm pressing tab and I get this little pie menu. Um, you may just go from and hit the tab button, go right back to object. I have a little pie menu installed, doesn't matter. I can see that my curve or my circle is standing up from the right view. And I see this and I go, well, this does not look that much like a toaster yet. It looks like a circle. All right. But we have the very beginnings of this. All right. But we don't need the whole circle. I really only need the top part. I'm going to get rid of the bottom part of the circle. I'm going to make that flat. So let's go back into edit mode, deselect it all, A to deselect it all, and say, well, I want to get rid of the bottom. So I'm going to click on this point. I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to click on all of these points. And I can do it that way till I get to there. And I can press delete or I can press the B key for box or border select and hold the left mouse button and draw a box around whatever ones I want. And I'll grab them all at the same time. X brings up the delete menu. And what do I want to delete? These points, X, they're called vertices. Delete them. And now I have this. So again, this is the side of the toaster. This is the front. This is the back. So it's a very rounded toaster. You put your toast in here. Well, mine is not that rounded. It's more of a flat circle. So let's flatten this. Select it first. And how do we want to flatten this? In the Z direction or Z. Let's go S, Z or S and then Z. Pull your mouse in or out. As much as you want let's say go hmm that's a bit of a nice curve just a gentle curve to the top there we go now it doesn't look much like a toaster yet doesn't have any depth to it this way or width to it this way let's look at three and let's see what we're gonna do we've got this curve now you might think it's this curve it doesn't really matter but I'm gonna tell you right now it's this curve okay so you see we've got this part but there's more flesh to this model and more bones. So let's do that. Looking from the side, we need to add more geometry. And the way we do that is using extrude. E is the shortcut. I'm going to press E and then left click my mouse. 
it's now added the material we need, but we don't see it yet because it's right on top of the old stuff. But if I start to pull down after I pressed E and then left click, I can see that I now have new points. I'm going to pull this down to where I would want roughly the bottom of my toaster. So this would be the top, this will be the bottom. And so I just pull down however much I want. But the bottom of my toaster is not rounded like that or else it will be hard to stand on the table. It's flat. So this is the Z axis. I basically want everything flattened in the Z axis. So I'm going to press S. Scale in the Z, S, Z, 0. S, Z, 0. Scale, Z, 0. Scale to a 0 point. A to D, select everything. Now I've got the curve to the top of my toaster and a flat bottom. But if I press 1 to look from the front and hit A just so we can see it better, my toaster is very, very thin. Let's give it some thickness or width. Let's pull out in the X direction this way. Now you could go either way, but let's pull out to the right along this X axis. So here we go. Wait, that just moved everything. Control C, let's not do that. We want to add more flesh to this. We're going to extrude E, left click, and now pull, and we have new geometry. Now how far do we pull out? Depends how thick you want your toaster, and all this can be adjusted later. Let's just, let's pull to there, okay, to that grid line. And this is what we have. I'm going to hit A to deselect. As I use the middle mouse button to scroll around, I see it, it seems to change color here. It goes dark. And then this one, it went dark, and then light. That's because as I pulled out, some of my geometry is kind of inside out. Like, you know when you do your laundry and your shirt, and one sleeve is inside out. You won't always know, maybe by looking at your model, if it is inside out, if part of it is. Um, you'll get used to telling by just the discoloration. But periodically, when you do a manipulation like extruding, you should select everything by pressing A, and then coming down to Mesh, Normals, Recalculate Outside. Now watch the colors as I do this. Control N is the shortcut. Ah, I went lighter. Let's hit A to deselect, and let's just move around. It's all the same color. So like I say, just once in a while you'll have to do that. You'll get better at knowing when to do that. Okay, three. Does that look like a toaster a little bit? Or half of a toaster? Sort of. Now, if I look from the front again, you'll see that my 3D cursor is right in the middle. Okay, sort of a marker of the middle of my stage. Imagine this is the right side of my toaster and the left side isn't there yet. I'm going to mirror this over, copy this over later. So whatever changes we make here, we'll be able to copy to the other side, sort of like symmetry. So we won't have to do it twice. Cool. Let's go back to the picture. Okay, so we have this part, the curve and straight down. We don't have the base yet, but we also don't have this. We're going to build this part. Now you might think, well, let's just do the same thing again. Let's create another circle and stuff, but how are we going to join it? There's an easier way to do this. Let's look from the side. I want another curve in here, okay? And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to switch over to face selection. And this changes uh, whether or not I'm looking at faces or the dots, vertices, or the lines, edges. I'm going to go to, to this one. Make sure everything's deselected. I'm going to press C, and that'll bring up the Paint Select tool, this little circle. You can scroll your mouse wheel to make it bigger or smaller. And if I hold the left mouse button, I just have to sort of scroll over it, paint over it. Hit Escape to come out of that. you got to hit Escape. And you can see it's selected just those. Now, if I wasn't in orthographic view, if I hit do that now and see... I might get some, I might paint on some of the other parts I want. I don't want that. Escape, A to deselect. Go three, make sure you're in orthographic view. And if you do C and you select, you will only get what is exactly in view. I want to select all of those. That's the side of my toaster. Selected all the side and I'm going to make this. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to make it smaller all right, this is a smaller curve, okay? So let's scale it. 
S to scale. And you go, wait a second, that's pulled everything. That doesn't look like a toaster. Let's control Z that. We're gonna do an extrusion again. I'm gonna press E to extrude, left click to accept. The geometry is there, we just may not see it. Let's now hit S and pull in a ways to maybe there. Okay, you see these faces right here? Okay, I pulled into this point. Now it's very flat, it doesn't come out yet like this does, we're about to do that. So we extrude it in like that, and now in the X direction coming out, let's just pull it out until we like the effect. Now you can be in whatever view you want, you tend to move around a bunch, you say I want it out that far or this far, I just want a gentle curve like that. I'm gonna hit A to deselect, and we're starting to create the toaster, okay? All right, let's go to one and look from the front. All right, I can see there's the top of the toaster. This is where the toast would go and it slopes down. That's looking good. But this part down here is not flat like it should be, like it is in my diagram. So we're gonna have to straighten this out. Okay, well, how can I straighten it out? I could B to box select the bottom stuff and oh, now I get all this top stuff and it doesn't go all the way through either. This part's not straight yet. Let's go back to one. That's not gonna work very good. Let's try vertex selection. Let's get these dots. Let me click there, there, and there. I'll hold shift to do that. And then you go, wait, I didn't get all of the dots. I could try to go around and get them all. That didn't work. Back in the front view, we could try edge selection and go, let me click that edge and hold shift to click that edge. That didn't get them all. All right, the way to do this is to go from solid view down here to wireframe or hit the Z key, the Z wireframe. And you could be in vertex, edge, or face selection, it doesn't matter. But once you're in wireframe, if you hit B to box select and drag a rectangle around the bottom parts, you will get all the way through, all of those. So why did we do that? Because we wanna, we wanna scale these in the Z to zero so it's flat. So let's go S, Z, zero. And that will flatten them in the Z axis all to zero. If I now deselect and go back into solid view, you can see we flattened the bottom. Let's go back right into object. Let's look at the skin level. There, there's half of our toaster. Now it's looking a little long, unless you want maybe a hole there and a hole there and four pieces or whatever. Let's go back from the side into edit mode, select it all, and let's scale this in the Y, make it narrower, no, no, less long. S, Y, scale Y, push in till you get, all right, I like that. Let's try that, back into object. Maybe that's okay. It's starting to look like a piece of bread, actually. Okay, well, we're getting close to making the other side. Um, we're gonna make this smooth, by the way. Uh, and I'm gonna do some manipulations here. So before we mirror this to the other side, we should do what we're gonna do. So let's do what we're gonna do. Let's make it smooth. Let's come up here and you can scroll your mouse wheel to move this along. Choose the wrench tool. Choose add modifier and subdivision surface. That will add much more geometry, but make it a bit smoother. We're gonna change the subdivisions view to what we see here to two. That's a pretty standard. We're gonna leave rendered at two. Now, that doesn't look too good yet. Let's come over here under the tools and choose shading smooth. That's looking smoother, but it doesn't look like a toaster yet. And so let's go back into the underlying edit mode and we'll see okay I see the outline of it well this has some sharp edges or relatively crisp or sharp edges and the way we're going to do that is we're going to add edge loops or loop cuts so where to put them well wherever you want a sharp line so for example at the top of the toaster right here all right this is a sharper edge and so we're gonna use a loop cut right in here. 
I'll, I'll show you what I mean first. Just watch this. Control R. Control R. See that pink line? I'm going to click. And before I do anything else, I can now move this. If I push this up towards the line there, not right on it, just towards it. Click to, to uh, drop that. Let's go back into object mode. I've sharpened this just a bit, not much yet, but hang on. Let's go back into edit mode. Let's do one more, because one is often not enough. Let's put one and drag it down to here. Control R, drag it down to here. Let's look at that. Now we're starting to see the sharpness. We're not done yet. We're starting to get there. Let's go back into object mode. Now, where else? What if I put one? I'm going to put one click there, and I'm going to drag it to here. On both sides of this original line, let's go back into object mode. Uh, now I'm starting to see the form of this. I, I brought an edge loop to this side and one to this side, and I'm starting to see this better. I'm going to do something here. Oh, in Blender. Back into edit mode. <clears throat> we had brought an edge loop. This one, I'm holding Shift and Alt. A to D select. Shift and Alt will select the whole edge. This is an edge, this line. I'm in edge selection right now. I brought that close to this original line. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to put another edge loop, Control R, click, and I'm going to pull up so that I get edges on both sides of this. Let's look in object mode, and I see that. The bottom is a little bit too rounded, so I'm going to bring in another edge loop. I'm going to go Control R, and I'm going to pull near the bottom. Now, that was a lot of stuff right there. You'll notice I didn't bring it right to the very bottom. I rarely do that, just very close to where you need it. And I start getting this. All right, so to recap, we had these lines, that one, and we had another one, and we, we went Control R, I'm gonna just stop that, and we brought in edge loops, this one and this one, or loop cuts, very close to the original line, and that sort of pushes the material together to sharpen it up. So we've got that. We are close to mirroring this to the other side. And this was, all that was the hard stuff, pretty much. We're done with a lot of the hard stuff. Okay, now, we're going to mirror this to the other side. The problem is that when I do mirror, I'll show you what, what's going to happen. I'm going to choose, uh, this is my subdivision surface to make it smooth. I'm just going to click this arrow to minimize it. It's still there. And I can turn it on or off with this eye, by the way. All right. I'm going to add modifier mirror and when it does that it's going to make a copy in the x-axis across the x-axis and it, it comes in all weird like this there's a couple of things we need to do first of all we're going to turn on clipping and second of all I'm going to go back into edit mode and I'll go into wireframe and how well and face selection you're not going to be able to see this very well but all of these things here with the dots on the inside are it's like the bones of, of this one are trying to meld with the bones on this one and we need to actually get rid of the faces on this side uh, to mirror properly so I'm going to hide the mirror I'm going to go back into solid view this is the stuff I'm talking about I don't need any of this when I mirror it over. So I'm gonna go to the side. Well, that's number three and that's the right. I actually wanna go control three. This is the inside that's gonna mirror. So I'm gonna go control three and I'm going to use the C paint select and I'm gonna paint all of these and it seems like you're gonna get the wrong edges. Make sure we get all of them exactly on the side but because we're in orthographic view it's not going to get any more than this I need to get rid of that stuff it's extra stuff that's going to be squished in the middle X faces 
These are faces that I selected. Let's go back into object mode and turn on the mirror and you can see that it's working okay. So sometimes you'll have extra faces as you try to mirror. You want to get rid of those extra faces in the middle. All right, that's looking very, very nice. I think we can go ahead and apply the mirror. I'm going to click apply. This is the mirror right here. Apply. You'll get applied modifier was not the first, so that's okay because I had the subdivision surface here and then the mirror. It's done. Let's go into edit mode and see what we got. This is what we got. Sometimes after you do this, you want to select it all and go W, remove doubles in case some of the ver vertices weren't you know, merged together when you did the mirror. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. Now, I got all of this stuff at the bottom. Um, this is the way it is. And there's not much I can do about that. And that's fine. Okie doke. Well, let's have a look. Yeah, it's starting to look a little bit like this. We need to do this bottom piece here. All right. So I'm going to look from the side for now. And I want to box select like that. Oh, and I get all this. Side. I want to do something just with the bottom. Well, let's go into wireframe. Now try box selecting just the bottom. And oh. Let's go out of wireframe, it's still selected. I've selected all of the bottom pieces. That looks great. We're gonna do something to make that base. We're going to scale it out in the X direction, that's the sides, and in the Y direction, that's the front and the back. We're gonna create this little base part here, right here. Okay, so I'm gonna go S, and I'm gonna get that. Well, that's not what I want. I'm gonna extrude new geometry, and then scale, so I'm gonna press E to extrude and left click. It's there. I haven't done anything. Now I'm going to press S and I'm going to come out. Now wait a second. Let's click to accept that. Let's not deselect. It looks all funny. Let's turn off the subdivision surface for a moment by clicking the eye so we can see. Okay, so I've come out like that. I've come out more in the Y direction and then in the X. I don't think I like that. So let's scale the Y back in. Let's go S, Y. Push your mouse up. You can hold the shift uh, key to make it go slower. Let's try to push it in so that the amount that we come out sort of in the Y direction is similar to the X. And then it comes out on an angle. Maybe I need more SY. Let's come out a bit. Let's just go with that. That's good enough. Okay, so I've come out to there. Still got all that selected. Now we're going to give it some height. All right, we've come out. Let's do this part and give some height. Let's go E again to extrude, E and left click, and pull down. Now you don't want to come down too much, you just want to make the base of the toaster. Let's deselect everything, go back into object mode. Oh, where is it? Oh. So we are in solid, sorry object mode right there. Let's turn on the subdivision surface again and you can see that it looks kind of rounded, a little bit like the base. We need to sharpen this up just like we did here. We're going to bring in some more edge loops. Let's go back into edit mode. All right. In order to make it look sharper, we're going to bring an edge loop down. Let's try it and see how it works. Control R, click and pull at the same time. See the way the white stuff's getting squished out? I don't need to come right to the very bottom. I can come to about there. Okay, I left clicked it to set that in. Let's look back in object mode and see what that's done. Let's sharpen this up somewhat. We're not there yet. Pulled it down. We need to do some more work. So basically what you do is you just add edge loops where you think you need them. So for example, I think this is too round. I want it sharper. So let's go in, let's deselect that. So see this area here? Shift Alt and click that edge. This is the area that is too smooth. Watch this, Control R, click, pull it up. I don't have to go right to the very edge, I can go right to there. Let's look at that. See the way that's made that sharper? This doesn't look that good yet, it looks kind of blah. So let's bring another edge loop in here. Control R, pull it in that way. And I'll get that. So far, so good. I think we could use one down here. 
is we can shift on and click on that edge there and with the manipulator I can pull it down more and that might be enough let's see does that look a little bit better now you see this white area we might need some reinforcements here all right often you will when you have a big long piece if I bring in another edge loop control R and bring pull it down you don't see it's off screen right now what if I keep pulling that'll sharpen it up a little bit more so sometimes you'll need to do that all right now let's go into edit mode now this right here on the bottom let's go into face selection is a lot of wasted geometry that won't be seen it's a lot of faces and you know if I switch over to uh, what am I doing? vertex it's a lot of these dots what is normally suggested is to delete the stuff that's not going to be seen now how to select them box select all the bottom well, I only got those so you may have guessed we're going to do this in wireframe box select the very bottom all the dots or all the faces you could do in face selection whatever okay I just have I'm going to go into solid view just the bottom if I X faces or vertices now vertices got rid of too much try X faces I get rid of the bottom and if this is resting on the ground no one's going to see that and I just saved a lot of vertices I got rid of that and they didn't need it save once in a while I've got part one up here I may do it all in one one shot though that's a lot of work so far to get to that point in fact I think we ought to leave it at that because that's more than half an hour I would say that the hardest part so far has been adding the edge loops where to put them why to put them uh, for now hopefully you're just following along and you're and you're getting this and you're getting a result that looks similar to this and if you are, then congratulations. We're on our way to making the toaster. Next part, we're going to make the hole here. We're going to add the little sliding uh, thing and the little dial.